secretly by an Australian POW, shows men suffering from beriberi and malnutrition, passed as fit by the Japanese. It was not unusual to come home with at least uh, one on a stretcher, because that person was possibly pushed, pushed out to work in the morning with heavy dysentery, because he could stand. At that moment, the Japanese looked at him, he could stand out, and he was dead five or six hours later. Men unable to walk were not spared. The stretcher cases were taken out and laid at the side of the railway with a hammer to break stones and you were carrying them in at night dead. In May 1943, cholera struck along the railway. Cholera Hill Hospital song cry. Beyond the tents, prisoners burnt the bodies. So they there were about 10 people whose job was to burn the bodies. Their faces were full of despair. I knew what was going through their minds because I was also in despair. But who was to blame for all this? There was no point in blaming God. We were up against reality. People were dying of cholera and so many bodies were piling up that we couldn't keep pace with the burning. But I had to complete my mission no matter what. I had to meet the deadline to finish the bridge. Cholera hit the Asian workers particularly hard. The Japanese took Tan Chung Keng to a camp where 200 men, women and children were too ill to move. I look at them say, well, what do you want me to do? Say, well, self fight to it, that's all. No choice. I told my men, I said, look, this is going to be terrible, I said, but either they die or we die. <laughs> if we don't do it, we die. We self fight to the camp. All these people, they started screaming, shouting, because they knew they were going to die. Their wives were the sufferers, men sufferers, you know, they, with the babies. Some of them were babies, you know, crying and shouting. But what could we do? This is the only way to survive, to destroy them or we be destroyed. God forgive us. Factor. Tony Mancy had once saved Dick Lee's life. When they met again months later, it was Dick's turn to look after Tony, now racked with disease. I goes and gets the bucket of water from Titch Wilson in the, in the cook house, and I'll come back and I'll wash this. Give his face a great good wash. Got the black out of the beard. He had this thick growth of a beard. Well, I couldn't have shaved him because it, it was like a la his face was so sunk in. His eyes were bright, but... It, his body was dead. His eyes were bright. But he was dead. He couldn't feel nothing. He couldn't feel no pain. You'll have to forgive me. I mean, I'm talking about one person. But there's so many of them suffered that way. Unbearable. He's lying in his mess. I've washed his front down. I haven't disturbed him. All I've washed down is his face, his chest, his arms. I haven't pushed him over yet, but he's lying in mess now. His dysentery smell. So I get hold of him. I said, I'm going to turn you over, Tony. So they had water. I pushed him on his side on it to get him up to his back. You've got to remember, you're pushing over a bag of bones. The spine's all showing through the back. Thin, the flesh is so thin, it's all bone. Captivity brought out the worst in some people, as the pressure to survive made them prey on one another. Dick Gordon went to see an American army medic. And he says, what's your problem? I told him, yeah, I've got the shakes and the chills, I have malaria, I need some quinine. And he said, we don't have any quinine. And sitting on his table was a bottle of quinine. 
And I said, well, isn't that quinine? He said, yes, but that's mine. It's $5 a tab. Now, that individual wanted to sell it to me, but he wasn't giving it to me. That was my fellow American. Prisoners sometimes took the law into their own hands. Precious supplies of extra food were smuggled into Fred Seeker's camp by Thai peasants risking their lives. But in exchange for a cushy job in the camp kitchens, a fellow prisoner betrayed the operation to the Japanese. He was a traitor. He was responsible for one of ours being beaten to death almost. Fred Seeker presided over a kangaroo court, which found the man guilty. I passed what I call a death sentence. And it was then decided by a majority vote what would happen to this person. This guy goes to the toilet late at night. Two chaps go with him. They kick his feet from under him. Down he goes, and they watch him not come up. Simple. On parade, he's missing. Nobody knows where he is. Start dragging the shit pit, out he comes. End of story. Collaboration was an issue from the start in the women's camps on Sumatra, where the Japanese offered better food and conditions in exchange for sex. They invited us to a cocktail party. So that was a matter of seeing how awful you could look. So we wore our uniforms, we went in, um, quite a few of the girls went in bare feet, one wore a pair of men's boots. Now if you could have seen the faces on most Japanese because we'd made ourselves look the most disreputable people and Patty Darling, she had, had beautiful curly hair and, and plastered down so that she looked terrible. We insisted, of course, we never drank alcohol, and but we did have some of the... Um, fruit juice, and they had quite nice savoury, so we soon demolished those. We took everything we could take. This went on for about two hours, and I think they got a bit fed up with us, so, so there were four of them, and they said four of the sisters had to stay. And one of the um, older sisters said, you younger ones, get out, which we did. We just slid out of the doors, and um, the four stayed behind. But finally we heard the crunching of the gravel underneath their feet. Well, we were just so th relieved. And then, of course, the first thing when they got inside, we said, you all all right? Yes, they said, nothing's happened to any of us. So we were very grateful for that because we had decided that if anything did happen, there was no way we could come home. So we were going to end our lives. You know, we had razor blades and all sorts of things that we could use, but it didn't happen. They were spared because others in the camp were prepared to do anything to earn more comfort. There were some women who were really quite uh, open to going with the Japanese, and we knew that, and that's what saved our lives, really. It saved us, saved our skin. Chinese soldiers discover a group of women forced into prostitution by the Japanese. 200,000 were kidnapped or press-ganged into sexual slavery serving 30 to 40 men a day in army brothels or comfort stations. Some were dragged to the front, raped in the trenches, then died in the fighting. It was rape on an industrial scale. Whenever the Japanese thought about it, they would just rape us. Night or day. We women couldn't say no. We couldn't refuse them. We had to go along with it. We suffered terribly. We almost couldn't get up from our beds because of the pain. Because it's not just one Japanese. There were loads of them. They would just rape anybody they wanted to. It was my sister I really pitied at that time. She lost her mind because of what the Japanese did to her. That's what happened to my sister. She suffered the most because she was kept in the barracks the longest. In one comfort station, Kiyoshi Sakakura realized the girl was in distress. 
She wouldn't stop crying. I thought it was strange, and so I called for the manager. He told me that she was new. She didn't know anything. She couldn't understand Japanese. I asked for her to be replaced. The manager sent in another girl, but that first one was clearly no more than a child. And there were Japanese with a conscience in the camps. A number of ex-prisoners recall the kindness of various guards. He might seem to be a little harsh when he was around other Japanese, but when we were by ourselves, he treated us very, very kindly. That was one of the finest men I've ever met. One of the finest men I've ever met, the sergeant. He brought me sweetened condensed milk, which most probably cost him a fortune, or he most probably could have lost his life if they ever caught him giving that to me, you know? But he was very, very kind. One man. Christmas Day in Dick Gordon's camp in Japan. The commandant, Lieutenant Kubo, attended a party in the British barracks. He was a very decent human being who even agreed to join them in their celebration for Christmas. He agreed to having a Christmas tree in there. He agreed to providing Red Cross packages. That would account for the smiles. He had just turned loose a Red Cross package that had cigarettes, canned foods of all kind, other foods that were incredible we hadn't seen. That made a lot of people happy.